it's a 4-4 tie. Randy, four hits tonight. I mean, this guy's been unbelievable. Keeping these guys in the game and, um, you know, good things happen. Didn't try to do too much, just hit a line drive, and luckily it found a hole. It's definitely a big one for us, and now we have a chance to win the series tomorrow. And today is a tomorrow that Granderson spoke about yesterday. A big win for the Yankees. A beautiful day here in New York City as Kia Motors presents the Wednesday game of the week. It's the New York Yankees against the Toronto Blue Jays in the rubber game of a three-game set from Yankee Stadium in the Bronx, New York. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Yankees baseball along with Paul O'Neill. I'm Michael. Okay, so a thrilling 5-4 to four victory for the New York Yankees, and it really all happened in the 8th and the ninth inning, Paul. Yeah, I mean, Toronto got off to a great start. Ricky Romero had shut him down pretty much all the game. You have a couple pitching changes, and Curtis Granderson, I mean, well, you could talk about him all night. Four hits, stolen bases, but the, the, the hits here are so important because they're hits with runners in scoring position, put the Yankees back in the, in the ball game. Give him a chance to win it in the ninth. Good thing happened here in the ninth inning. A gutsy call by Joe Girardi. Let Orhe Posada pinch hit off the bench. First pitch. Orhe looks like the little guy that thinks he can do it. He just keeps chugging, goes into second base. Pinch runner, but it sets up what happens in the ninth inning. Curtis Granderson again. Big hit in the ninth inning. And I love to see. Stolen base tie game 4 4. Give Mark to share one of your run producers an opportunity to win a ball game. Hits it on the nose. Juan Rivera off the glove. Everybody goes home happy, Michael. They did go home happy, so Granderson slides in with the fifth one run, the winning run. Posada gets mobbed. His teammates happy for him as well. And since it was a walk off, there was pie involved. It wasn't a good execution for the pie, but it was pie. Nonetheless, let's look at today's New York lottery pitching matchup. Jojo Reyes will go for the Blue Jays 0-3, 4.07. He is really looking for a win. Freddie Garcia goes for the Yankees 2-4 with a 3.12 ERA. Really, the story of yesterday's game was Curtis Granderson. He absolutely did it all. Four hits, he scored the winning run. And you know what he's going to do now? He's going to tell you what's happening next. I'm Curtis Granderson, and I'm coming up next. This is brought to you in part by Volvo. Pay nothing to repair or maintain your new Volvo for the first five years. Volvo for life. By IOTV. IOTV offers you incredible HD picture and sound. Get the best in HD free. And by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Well, what a great day in New York City. A Wednesday matinee. Kids are out here in force at the ballpark. Yankees looking for a win today, which would give them a win in the series. So the Yankees have taken the field. They're applying the lamp black on Jose Molina. That means it's going to be a day game. That means the sun is out. That means it's picture perfect. Let's take a look at the Blue Jays starting lineup presented by Bank of America. Yunel Escobar, the shortstop, leads off batting second. Playing left field, Corey Patterson. Jose Bautista in right field will hit third. Cleaning up and playing first base, Juan Rivera. Jose Molina will catch him bat fifth. Batting sixth, playing second base, Aaron Hill. Eric Thames, the DH, will hit seventh. The number eight hitter, center fielder Rajay Davis. And Jason Nix is at third base. He's going to bat ninth. And here is Freddie Garcia. Garcia so far this year in seven starts, two and four. Good ERA, 39 hits and 43 innings, 17 walks, 32 strikeouts. Opponents hit 238 against him. And the Jeep Pitcher Scouting Report. Well, summertime Freddie ought to love today. I mean, last year he went through a little spurt. He was 9 and 1 from mid May to mid July. It's like the heat. First pitch is directed into left center field. It is a base hit. It splits the outfielders and it's going to roll to the wall. Escobar chugs around second. He's going to go to third and he'll make it with a stand up triple. As a pitcher, you don't even get a little courtesy pitch. Strike one. That's <laughs> to the wall for a triple. So he starts him off with a fastball. Run back with uh, not enough sink on it. Escobar, who. Uh, Came out of the on deck circle swing and ends up at third base. And he had triple on his mind right from the start. Never thought about stopping at second. Why should he? He ends up with a stand up three. 
So Escobar is at third, nobody out. Yankees in at the corners for Corey Patterson. Pitches low, 1-0. Getting back on track, getting back to my Jeep scouting report. I mean, he, he started the season off with two real good starts, but his last five starts, he's one and four. Not a bird lover. Career over a six ERA, which is his worst ERA against any American League team. And it's so weird when that happens, Paul, because it, it, I think it becomes the uniform. Because the Blue Jays are nothing like they were even a year ago. They're a completely different team. Yeah, I, you definitely do uh, get in certain habits against certain teams, certain ballparks, no doubt about it. Can't be the uniforms, Michael. They've changed. Well, they used to be red, white, and blue. That's right. Pitch is low. Well, Jerry Seinfeld, the comedian, always says that you don't root for the players, you root for the laundry. So I guess if you struggle against a team, you're really struggling against the laundry. <laughs> Because teams are so transient now. Here's the 2 1. 2 and 2. Very few clouds in the sky. Just a gorgeous Wednesday afternoon as Jose Bautista is on deck. Nice block there by Russell Martin. It made it, Paul. You feel like playing today, don't you? You know, this is one of those days where you think, you know, it, it would have been a good day to get loose, play, have a nice uh, meal at home afterwards. Yeah, that's uh, perfect baseball weather, no doubt about it. Although they're heading on a flight today. Mm -hmm. Going to the West Coast. Start a nine game West Coast swing on Friday. The 3 2. Fouled off in front of the foot. Really weird way to start a game. I mean, first pitch triple, first pitch home run, okay, all right, one to nothing, let's just get thing. But when the guy's on third base as a pitcher, you start pitching, trying to get out of things, trying to save runs, save outs. Last thing you want to do is, you know, you almost concede one run. You just don't want to get off on the wrong track and have a big inning in the first inning. 3 2. Well, Patterson really badly. Freddie Garcia. Let's look at the game time weather presented by Bigelow T. Oh, the city looks great today. 77 degrees. Can't get better than that. 46% humidity, not much wind, and the forecast is sunny. There's those fields over there we're going to have a catch on someday, Mike. That's right. Yeah, Bigelow ought to get. Two weather reports today. You have a day like this, and the seventh inning stretch will run it again. Right back to Garcia. He checks the runner and they get Patterson. So Garcia wins that battle with the Blue Jay left fielder. Seems like he kept throwing him off speed. Yep. I mean, Freddie Garcia has a good, good split fingered fastball. He, he, you don't really know as a hitter the movement on it can go in any which way. The ball kind of stayed up in the zone. Patterson topped it. Why, as a hitter, that's a horrible way to start the day. You get up with the man on third base, you think, wow, it's going to be a great day. Couldn't ask for a better situation, and then you ground out to the pitcher. Here's Jose Bautista. He did not reach base last night, and that's only the third time that's happened this year. Bautista, four for six, two home runs and three walks against Freddie Garcia. Popped him up. Middle of the infield. Garcia takes down Nunez and Teixeira makes the play. And you know what? That might have been a, a fortunate takedown because it looked like Nunez was going right toward yeah, Teixeira. Didn't, didn't look like he had heard Mark Teixeira call that ball. And that ball is right there, right in the middle of the pitcher's mouth. Garcia. <laughs> I think he did it on purpose. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> No, I guess he was trying to get out of the way. <laughs> Sometimes baseball isn't pretty, you know. Hmm. Freddy Garcia is a big guy, too. Nunez went down. So now Garcia has a chance to get out of this. Yeah. I mean, again, you start off with a triple. You got to say, boy, this is a weird way to start off. But now you've, you've got two hitters out, one being the best hitter in the league in Bautista. And he is going to get out of it. Nunez coming down from third makes the play. 
What a start for Freddie Garcia. First pitch triple, and the Blue Jays don't score. Blue Jays nothing, and the Yankees coming to bat. Kept the Blue Jays off the board, and that's a lift for him and a little bit of a downer for the Blue Jays. Let's take a look at the Yankees starting lineup. That's going to face JoJo Reyes, and it's presented by Lexus. The captain, the shortstop, Derek Jeter, leads off batting second. Playing center, Curtis Granderson. Mark Teixeira, the first baseman, hits third. Cleaning up, playing DH, Alex Rodriguez. Robinson Cano, the second baseman, bats fifth. Batting sixth and catching, Russell Martin. Nick Swishers in right field, batting seventh. Hitting eighth and playing left field, Andrew Jones. And Eduardo Nunez, the third baseman, will bat ninth. So Derek Jeter is on deck, and he's getting ready to dig in against Jojo Reyes. 0-3, 4.07, 60 hits and 48 two-thirds, 13 walks, 37 strikeouts. Opponents at 303 against them. Now let's take a look at the Jeep pitcher scouting report. Well, the scouting report's not getting any better. I mean, searching for a win. He's 0-12 in his last 27 starts. But you know, does he have an advantage today? Possibly, because the Yankees, we've talked about it. He's never faced the Yankees, and sometimes uh, that can be a problem for veteran hitters. Support. I mean, he needs support, obviously, but he's not as bad as his record indicates. I mean, he's he's thrown some good games, a couple in games where he's seven innings, given up a couple runs, but he just continues to lose those those decisions. Seven shutout innings in his last start. He led two nothing, but the bullpen did not hold on. Pitches low to Derek Jeter. Derek hitless in this series. Two straight 0 for fives for Derek. He's 0 for his last 11, hitting 254. Now, Paul mentioned that JoJo Reyes has not won a start in 27 starts. And that's significant. Why? Because the major league record is no wins in 28 starts. And it's shared by two Cliff Curtis, 1910, 1911 with the Boston Braves, and Matt Keogh, 78, 79 with the A's. So this could be a historic afternoon. Now, the scouting report that I got on Reyes is that his stuff is decent, but sometimes he's afraid of the barrel of the bat. Mm -hmm. He just doesn't want to challenge hitters, and he gets a little bit too fine around the corners, walks people, and then ends up having to come in. He's going to, you know, he'll, he'll throw a lot of change ups, got a fastball and a slider. He pitches lefties and righties completely different. A lot more change ups to righties, a lot more sliders to lefties. But, you know, again, is this a confidence thing? Now it's driven deep to right field. It's going to be over the head of Bautista and up against the wall. Jeter starts off the first with a double. 24 hits away from 3,000. Well, this is vintage Derek Jeter. Ball up and away. Drive it the other way. Good swing. Hit it hard enough to get over Bautista, who's a good outfielder. And a bad carom, and Derek just walks into second base. 24 away. Paul thinks it's going to happen in the middle of June. Yankees have a nine game road trip before they come back. Curtis Granderson takes outside. 1 0. What a night for Granderson. He detailed it during the start. Four hits, stolen base, ended up scoring the winning run. And a 16 homer, second best in the majors to Jose Bautista's 19. Granderson six for his last 19. See, Derek gets really hot on the road and is one hit away. Have one game to play on the road. Is Joe already consider having him do that home? Is it that important? That one gets away from Molina as Jeter goes to third. That you do it on the road or at home? It's a great question. I've been asked it before. My gut feeling is that the game is more important than the record. And if you think that you could win with Derek Jeter in the lineup in that last game on the West Coast, I think you have to play it. To try to hook you up though, Michael, because if that scenario happens, I'll just I'll text Joe and say, you know, Michael wants that call. He wants to call his 33,000 hits. And since I won't be on the West Coast, right. That's a good call. That one is drilled to right field. It's a base hit. One hop up against the wall. Jeter scores. Granderson into second with an RBI double. Yankees up one nothing. Well, we talked about in the pregame, Curtis Granderson, left-handers, right-handers, it does not matter. The key is that front shoulder against lefties. Stays in there, ball up, out over the plate. Night and day of where he was last year at this time. Beautiful swing. 
Reyes is probably thinking to himself, here I go again. So Granderson now, five straight hits. Hey, the best way I could look at it with Reyes, and we've always said this about guys that lose 20 games, you've got to have something for them to keep running out there. <laughs> That's what they used to say about uh, Anthony Young when we faced him, and, and you would. You'd come back to the dugout and think, Man, this guy's got pretty good stuff. He just never wins. Anderson had three straight walks to end Monday's game. So he has been on base a lot, and he picked up four hits and five at bats yesterday. So now the double right now, five. Eight, eight out of the last nine times he's been on base. Get my scorebook out help you. Popped up, shallow center. Hill drifts back and dropped the ball. So to share reaches, we'll see how they score. Got to be an air. I mean, uh, you've got they had they had the wagon circled, and it just Aaron Hill couldn't put it on. again. The day game, he called the outfielder off. Scored an E4. Espo shows that that glove just wasn't long enough, right off the end of the pocket. And that's what Hill is looking up at. Alex Rodriguez steps to the plate, 16 for his last 35, that's 457, seven runs, three home runs, five multi-hit contests in his last eight games. Upstairs. Tough matchup for Reyes here because Alex Rodriguez can cover everything he has because he doesn't have the overpowering fastball to get up under his hands. Alex is a good slider hitter. He's, he can handle that, that change up. And Reyes has got everything up in the first inning. When you see the Yankees getting real good swings off of him. Popped up. Catch is made by Davis for the first out. Look at Reyes early in the game. Everything up, even that last fastball to Alex Rodriguez. He's not the type of pitcher that can pitch up there all game, especially with his off-speed stuff. Fastball. Alex, you can see those hands pulling in. Didn't quite get to it. Good pitch to hit. Early in the game, just wasn't ready to get there. Here's Cano. Cano got a big hit yesterday, and that was in the uh, the sixth inning. Check that in the eighth inning, with a runner on third base and two outs. Yankees were about to go down again, leaving a runner on base in scoring position. But Cano picked up the double, and then Russell Martin picked up the single. That made it 4-3, and kind of set the stage for the ninth inning. And we talked about it a little bit yesterday, Michael. They made a pitching chain. They had one of their best relievers out there, and they brought the you know the, the textbook. Lefty lefty matchup, and if that does, does not work to Robinson Cano, I mean, he can get by, he can hit lefties, and it ended up uh, costing the Blue Jays a couple runs. And the pitcher you're talking about that they had in Casey Jansen, an under two ERA, then they brought in Martin Zachinsky, and uh, it just doesn't neutralize Cano. It's foolish. You should keep in your better pitcher there, what Paul's trying to say, because Cano hits over 300 against lefties. And he does pretty well against righties, but a nice catch by Bautista, and they are going to double up Granderson at second. So you score at 9 3 6, a double play off the bat of Cano. He scalded the ball, but he hit it too hard, didn't sink enough, as Bautista makes a nice play to turn that one into the first out of a double play. The Yankees score a one, two hits, and one left. You've made this play before, Paul. The hardest play as a right fielder because the ball is right at you. To the play here, to the play here, you can reach. But when that ball is right at you, you kind of lose sight of it. The last couple feet, really, really tough player. Look at Granderson trying to go the shortcut. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> huh? 
That works in the major leagues, doesn't it? So even if he would have been safe at second, he would have been out, they would have appealed because once you cross a base, you've got to retrace that step. And he didn't do it. He said, let me just go the shortest distance to two points, a straight line. Here's Jose Molina. And the pitch is a strike. Hey, second inning, we get a chance to talk to Kim Jones. Oh. I know you like where that. Where is Kim? She's out in the sunshine somewhere. That's right. Where's Waldo? Where's Kim? I think she's in the third base. <laughs> Camera well now Kim yesterday after the game the Yankee clubhouse was obviously very very happy And when they're happy sometimes they're introspective and very open They they kind of uh, uncovered a lot of the questions we had leading into that inning Yes, Michael and they Jorge Posada in particular confirmed something you and Paul said Jorge Posada would not have pinch hit last night in the ninth had Brett Gardner reached if Gardner's on base there Nunez is at Nunez is asked to sacrifice him to second so you guys were right on that count as far as Curtis Granderson goes I asked him about stealing second he had been caught stealing earlier in the game he said first of all he thought it was worth the risk there secondly reliever Frank Francisco slower to the plate than was Ricky Romero you and Paul all also mentioned that with the shift on for Teixeira, perhaps Granderson, Granderson could have popped up and stolen third as well. He said he noticed it, decided that was not worth the risk, but quote, I filed it away. So maybe we will see that later in the season from Granderson. And Teixeira, of course, had that game-winning hit in his mind, but first and foremost, he wanted to give Granderson a chance to steal a base. He did. Granderson in scoring position scores on the Teixeira game winner. So you had a big game as well, Paul. You you were right on top of all that say, stuff. We were on top of our I'm game last night. Really? <laughs> all right. Now speaking of Granderson, and we seem to be speaking a lot of Granderson. What's the feel in that Yankee clubhouse and from Joe Girardi? Because coming into yesterday's game, Granderson he said he wasn't that happy with the way he's swinging the bat. Yeah, he told me that coming into the series, Michael. Despite all the home runs, he said I've had six hits in the last three series. I've got to improve. Well, he's been on base just about every plate appearance this series as you noted in the last inning and I actually asked Joe Girardi if those four hits last night could perhaps make Granderson feel even better about himself at the plate well Joe Girardi said they were textbook swings last night from Curtis Granderson but then Joe stopped and said I'm actually not even sure what to say because he's looked pretty good all season to me Joe saying sometimes hitters can be so self-critical that they are critical when the rest of us think they're going well so that's my perfect chance to send it back to Paul O'Neill because I think he can agree with that uh, self-critical approach as a hitter, right, Paul? Well, I mean, uh, you're right. I mean, uh, if you if you feel like you're you are getting hits and you don't feel like you're having good swings, you know those hits are going to stop. And Curtis Granderson came into this series thinking, you know, I, I'm getting some hits, but I'm not at my best. Obviously, he slept on it and woke up and came into this series swinging the bat real well. But it does stop you from making changes. If you're getting a couple of blue pits, you're not going to change things around. Well, I mean, usually when you're getting blue pits, you're doing something mechanical. Usually when you're going through slumps, it's in your head. So uh, see this argument you got going up here, Kim? Huh? <laughs> I'd love to stir it up. <laughs> All right, let's talk bullpen. What's the uh, what's the bullpen standing right now? Well, we haven't seen Mariano Rivera in a week. Michael Joe Girardi said, yeah, it's nice to get him some time off, but he would like to get him in there today with tomorrow being a day off for the Yankees. He also noted that with Rafael Soriano out for what may be an extended period of time, even though we do not know the results of his visit this afternoon with Dr. James Andrews, Joe Girardi saying that after the setback on Monday, he believed that the Yankees would be without Soriano for, quote, a while anyway. Anyway, unquote. So it is now Jabba Chamberlain and David Robertson who have such important pieces in that bullpen. But Luis Ayala has joined the mix. Joe saying he's been so good, he will use him in Robertson's former role as Robertson is now basically the seventh inning guy. Aaron Hill lines a single left center with one out, so a man on. It's, it's really odd because before they signed Soriano, you take Ayala out of the mix. That's the way the bullpen was going to break down anyway, Kim. It was going to be Mariano, Jabba, and, and Robertson in that order. You're right about that. And David Robertson simply said today, hey, without Soriano, we just have to try harder to do our jobs. Well, they've been doing it lately. One interesting note, Joe Girardi's pretty good about resting his relievers. In fact, he often sticks to it to a T. However, Jabba told me today that he told David Robertson yesterday, we need you, and we need you in September. If you need a day, you've got to tell Joe. Thames pops it up. Shallow right sliding is Swisher. And the Cano makes the play. Cano just whipped it out of the air and hold it in. And just before it was going to go into the glove of Swisher. So a nice play by Cano. This is a backwards play, too, because you're always taught that the infielder slides and the outfielder goes above just in case there's a collision. And you'll see on this play, 
Swisher slid. So you, you could have had a collision there or a knee to the head if you're Nick Swisher. Freddy Garcia likes what he sees. Well, Kim, we will talk to you in the post game. Now, you have a choice. You can stay down there in the sun or come back up here. It's up, it's up to you. I'm not going to complain either way. How's that for an answer? Well, but I'm going to come up and see you and Paul. I want we'll an miss answer, you. Kim. Don't say that. I want an answer. I'm going to come fit. back, Paul. I'll be right there. I feel a lot better about yourself <laughs> right now. <laughs> All right, Kim. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Runner remains at first. Rajay Davis swings and misses at the first pitch. He looks down at Brian Butterfield, third base coach. See if anything's on. It's a 1 nothing Yankee lead, top of the second inning. There's a strike. Davis, a mini three game hitting streak, four hits and 12 at bats. Kim must do a lot of homework. She gets a lot out of those little hitting breaks. A lot of homework. Yeah, she, she works. It. That wouldn't be a good job for me. That would not be a good job. <laughs> <laughs> Let's send it down to Paul. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> good game we got going here, Michael. Back to you. <laughs> I was reading about a story about hot starts and slow starts and how how it makes players feel. And I read that in 1994 when you won the batting title. The end of May, you were hitting 459. Right. And you know, the, the one memory I have about that is the reporters start at the end of May or at the beginning of May, you know, you're hitting 400. Do you think? And I, I said, you know what? If I'm hitting 400 at the beginning of June, we'll talk about it, all right? And I'll be darned on June 1st, I get to the ballpark and they're all at my locker. <laughs> so, um, you know, it, it is something that it, it, that is fun. But it also becomes a hassle when you have to talk about what you're going to accomplish in the year, and it's only June. There's nothing better than getting off to a good start as a player, though. It just makes things so much easier. Digging out of a hole is very tough to do. Rajay Davis swings at a pitch out of the strike zone. Blue Jay strand one. We go to the bottom of the second. Jaguar. See how Jaguar outperforms the competition at jaguarperforms.com. By Turkey Hill, the official ice cream of the New York Yankees, and by the new definition of world class, 2011 Buick Lacrosse. A view, a view from above as the Yankees lead one nothing. Bottom of the second inning, Russell Martin will lead off against JoJo Reyes. Always get differing views on this ball, so let me come to you with it. Yankees really win an exhilarating game yesterday. Mm. Two in the eighth, two in the ninth. Carryover effect or not? I think so. And you saw it early in the game because all of a sudden you go from thinking to yourself in the mid innings, you know, we're, we, we got a chance to, to lose again. And, you know, they haven't been playing well at home. Now you have this big win. You come to back to the ballpark and you're thinking, now we got a chance to win two out of three. I think it really picks up a team to have a win like last night. But then sometimes I get fooled by that. You were with me for the Yankees Rangers playoff series last year. Mm -hmm. And when they won that first game and, and the Rangers blew it, I foolishly said that the series was over because I thought that that would have a carryover effect. And then the Rangers ended up coming back and winning it. Playoffs in the season, completely different. Really? Ball game. I think so. And, the, and a lot has to do with the days off that you have between games and things like that. And also the importance you. you you don't have the same mindset during the playoffs that you do during the season. There's just no way. Russell Martin with the walk. Let's take a look at the Jays defense brought to you by your Mercedes Benz Tri State dealers. Patterson, Davis, and Bautista left to right in the outfield. Nix gets to start at third. Then there's Escobar, Hill, and Rivera. That's third to first. The veteran Molina behind the plate. And then Jojo Reyes is on the mound. Here's Nick Swisher. Nick is 0 for his last 12. Joe Gerais has not started a Yankee batter off with a first pitch strike. And still has it. Consistent. And another guy that you talk so well about Granderson, and it was so exciting to see Jorge Posada get that big hit last night. And, and here's your other concern if you're if Joe Girardi is trying to get Nick Swisher. And it's not going to happen this at bat or today, but it has to happen 
progressively. You know, you have a couple good at bats today, you have a good West Coast trip, and before you know it, you've had a good month. But at some point, you're going to have to see some quality at bats time and time again, four or five in the same day, where you know a player start to turn it around. Into right center field, giving chases Bautista a nice running play for the first out. When ball. you're struggling, that happens. Yeah, ball hit off the end of the bat just enough to let that ball kind of hang out there. You see, it was a good approach, but you see the ball off the end of the bat didn't hit the barrel. The barrel, the ball will keep, keep, you know, traveling. That ball off the end of the bat just gives that right fielder Bautista time enough to run under it. Talk nothing but good things about Bautista. He's been an unbelievable offensive player, great defensive player. He misplayed a ball last night. It really became crucial late in the game where you know, he kind of bobbled that ball to Jorge Posada, hit it, ended up being a double. I don't see it very often. He's such a solid player out there. This is Andrew Jones is lost. Talking to Brian Butterfield, the third base coach, about Bautista, and also Tori Lavello, the first base coach. They said, Bautista should actually win a gold club. You watch him, he's got a great arm. He changes the way third base coaches wave runners home. Backs up plays at first base, constantly moving, does everything right out there. They couldn't say enough good things about the guy. Deep drive, left center field, going back Davis on the track, looking up, see ya! Two run home run, Andrew Jones, and the Yankees lead three to nothing. Garner's been swinging the bat really well. You just insert him in the DH role or in the, in the lineup today. You see Reyes just up in the zone. Andrew Jones know, knew immediately this ball was gone. Hit the back wall. There's a first first pitch strike by Jojo Reyes as he was ahead of count 0-1 to do this. You have to look at that one. You just hear the sound and know where it's going. Nunez pops it up. Nix will put it away. Had a fight. The Sun almost dropped that ball. With that home run and the three runs already, the Yankees have outscored opponent 74 43 over the first two innings this season. 37 16 in the first, 37 27 in the second. I guess they run into trouble after that. It's like if they get off to a good start, they, they pile it on, and, and if. You know, they get off to, you know, first two or three innings, they don't score. It seems like it's been a struggle. And, you know, they start waiting for those home runs. Here's Derek Jeter started the uh, the first inning with a double over the head of Bautista. about it. And if he can get ahead with that fastball, which he hasn't done much today, you know, he can get those righties, especially, uh, you know, down at their back foot. Check swing, swing out. Down one and two. Derek with the double in the first inning, now 24 hits away from 3,000. No major league player in the history of the game has ever picked up his 3,000th hit at Yankee Stadium. Ground ball by Gina, Escobar backhands and fires, and that will do it here in the second. But the Yankees get two runs on one hit, and the one hit off the bat of Andrew Jones. With a runner on first base, he drives one into the bullpen in left center. With that, the Yankees lead 3-0. Hitless in his last 14 at bats. It's 
it me or do we have a lot of guys going through hitting streaks? A lot of guys. Huh? Lincoln scoreboard 3 0 Yankees over the Jays. Well, baseball doesn't have as much hitting as it, as it did like four or five years ago. Get back to uh, a game for pitchers. Count one and two. See the difference in Freddie Garcia on how that, that little sinker he's throwing, how it's down in the zone, and how Reyes has been missing up. It's different as a hitter with that sinking fastball to get it up above the waist. Good pitch to hit. Down by the knees, tough pitch to hit. Count two and two. Garcia has certainly pitched better than his two and four record. You have a 3.12 ERA in the American League. You should not have an under 500 record, especially when you're pitching for a first place team. But he has not had the best of luck. The 2 2. Ground and four. The split figure fastball, and again, tough pitch to hit. Uses it a lot with two strikes. Also uses it a lot with red men in scoring position. That's one of his strengths, even at this point in his career. He gets that big out. Yeah, you know, they've got running runners in scoring position. He has a good knack for getting that out. Ground ball to Jeter. And he retires Nix. Let's check out the Yankee defense. And it's brought to you by your Mercedes Benz Tri State dealer. In the outfield, Jones, Granderson, and Swisher. That's left to right. Infield, we got Nunez at third with A Rod DHing. Jeter at short, Cano at second, to share at first. Russell Martin playing a day game after a night game behind the plate. Freddie Garcia is on the mound. Here's Yunel Escobar. And there's a strike. Now, when the um, the Blue Jays scored three runs in the fourth inning, it was a safety squeeze by John McDonald. And I checked it out. That was actually called from the bench. Tapped right back to Garcia. Then Yunel Escobar bunted with a run on third, and he did that on his own. And he was kind of schooled by the coaches and John Farrell. You, you can't do that on your own because the guy can't score. We've got to tell the guy at third that you're about to bunt, so he's going to take off. Rajay Davis is a good base runner, and the first thing that he heard before Yunel Escobar came up from Brian Butterfield was, nothing's on, go on anything on the ground. He said, so he wasn't ready to go on a bunt. He said, you know, has to know, you can't put down a squeeze without the third base runner right. knowing. It's tough. I mean, Davis, you, you, you think would just react because of his speed. And Escobar probably got the same thought process. But again, if you are going to try those plays, yeah, you, you do need to uh, let people know what's going on. Swisher's there, and he'll put it away for the final out of a one, two, three inning. We played two and a half here in the Bronx. It's three, nothing games. And it's going to rain, so it's going to be our type of weather. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's sometimes it's good to get out on a trip like this as a group where the, you know, there are no distractions. It's, it's only, you know, your club together, and it can be a good thing. Let's hope so. And that road trip begins on Friday. Let's look at the upcoming schedule. Brought to you by SL Express. Enjoy the journey. Three games in Seattle. All on yes. Three games in Oakland. All on yes. Then an off day on Thursday. And then three games against the Angels in Anaheim. You yeah. making that trip, the whole trip? No. No? Nope. Singleton and Coney, the first six games. And then Bob Arends and John Flaherty, the final three. Lincoln scoreboard 3 0, so you promise to text Joe and say, don't play Jeter. If, if, if right. I want you to have that call, Michael. Now, what happens if on the last day he's three hits away? Do you take your chance and put him in that he can get the three hits? You know what? Listen to this. I'm, I got called up in 1985, right? And right. If you remember in Cincinnati what's happening then, Pete Rose is going to break uh, Ty Cobb's record. Right. And like two days after I get called up, we're in Wrigley Field, Chicago. He ties the record. He has another at bat that game. Could have broke the record. But he ended up uh, 
Grab it Pass to diving Rivera. And Granderson continues to scald, and he gets in there with a double. You can't be hotter than Curtis Granderson. Curtis Granderson again will go over the same thing. The shoulder in, picking up the ball quick, hitting it to the right spot. Rivera has had more plays at first base. Every time, it seems like if you're playing a position you're not accustomed to playing, Juan Rivera's a left fielder. It's like the ball finds you. You see in the slow camera that it's still he's safe. Any way you look at it, another double. Here's the course like freeze cam. We'll see if he is in fact safe. Freeze it. Wow. I don't know. Pretty close. Yeah. Closer than I thought. Glad we froze it. <laughs> so Pete Rose actually did that in that last event. Yeah, everybody on the bench was thinking, and myself included, wow, is he going to hit again? Because we're going home tomorrow. Right. And uh, yeah, he went up, had another at bat, did not get a hit, and ended up going over for a couple days at home, and then got the big hit in Cincinnati in front of uh, 55,000 people. Home people. How neat friends. was it? I mean, you're a kid from Cincinnati, and obviously you grew up watching Pete Rose and Big Red Machine, and you were there to witness this. Like I've told many times that people go through like your, your top 10 memories of baseball. That was in it, and I wasn't even a part of it, other than sitting on the bench and running out there and acting like I belong part of the team because I just been called up. Popped up. Mix shades his eyes from the sun. He was near that ball and ends up in the seats. I don't think he saw it. No, I mean, we've talked about it in the old ballpark left field was the tough sun field and which would include the shortstop in the third base. And Michael, I don't know if we had enough sunny days early in the year to realize that, but you're right. I mean, there, the, you, you could tell he was fighting that sun the whole time. Was at first base. I, I remember seeing like you. This tall guy with an yeah, afro. Yeah, that was me. With an afro. <laughs> that was me. Big grin on your face. Oh, absolutely. That was me. Two two. Driven deep to left field. Patterson back, turning, looking. See ya. Two run home run. Right to share a bullet. Into the seats and left, and the Yankees lead five nothing. You're seeing continual good swings from the Yankees, which is telling me that Reyes is missing with a lot of pitches. Again, fastball right down the middle of the plate. You just cannot miss with this kind of stuff like he is right now. Yankees taking advantage of it. Here's Alex. One and oh. Lady in pink ends up. Oh, where right. is? You don't even fight for it. It just comes to you. You know. Everybody's squirming, squirming around for the ball, and she just pops up with the ball. 13th home run of the year for Teixeira. Now it's 32 ribbies. Off the thumbs and a one hop for a second, and Alex is out. IOTV offers incredible HD picture and sound. Get the best in HD free. IOTV is the official HD service provider for Yankees baseball on this. Third baseman putting his glasses on in the middle of the inning. Kind of an unwritten rule that if you ever lose a ball in the sun without glasses, you're in trouble. You know, if you lose a ball in the sun and you had the glasses, you did everything you could. Which, you know, the glasses aren't 100% foolproof. If you lose the ball directly in the sun, glasses really don't help. Beautiful as that sun looks like in the sky today, it can be that. That's waiting to uh, take you back to Cincy. Is that right? Yeah. It's going to take a while, too. We've got a couple <laughs> connections through the Hudson River and the valley and the lakes and everything to get there, too. 
Now, when you were in the outfield, did you prefer the flips or did you prefer the wraparounds? I, I went to the, the wraparounds late in my career. Much easier. Uh, the, the flip sometimes as, as you went, and that's what happens if you don't have them, you can just put the wraparounds right on top of your head. But the flip sometimes, if you were running back towards an angle, could give you a lot of problems. I never could hit with them, though. I, I mean, I'm used to look at Bernie and hit, hit with the glasses on. I never felt like I saw the seams of the baseball well with the glasses on. And a lot of guys hit with them. Mm -hmm. Catchers wear them. It's all preference. I believe that Molina has on glasses right now. Yeah. So does that thing. Little fella's got the wrap around them. Some lemonade. It's not be the official day of you know the start of every ice cream season, lemonade season. Grounded to second, Hill. For the second out. Been seeing some of these great shots from above. And we have to thank the people at Direct TV. Aerial coverage brought to you by Direct TV. Get every MLB game in the most in HD. Call 1 800 Direct TV. That's a strong little bolt right there. Because uh, it's pulling the big one. Powerful. Huh? Little tug. You ever go on a cruise ship? I used to go on a lot of them. Yeah, early in my career, that they, they would have the, you know, like the Cincinnati Reds cruise ships, and you'd go on before we had kids and stuff. Yeah, it was a great time. And you had to, you had to interact with fans. Oh, best buddies! Look at that. Circle line. Just like that, out in the, in the ocean, on the circle line. Have you ever done the circle line? No. That neat. What is it? It just it circles Manhattan. Wow. It's a great view. It's a tour. It's a tour of it. A lot of people don't. I mean. You grew up here, you know, but if you tell somebody from the Midwest, Manhattan, New York City, it's an island. Right. They just don't, they don't get it. They don't understand it. Well, that circle line's jammed right there, so doing brisk business on this beautiful day. It takes three hours to go around Manhattan and you circle around the Statue of Liberty. It could take three hours to get to the George Washington Bridge from here. I mean, it's, it's a drive, pretty good yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two walks with Russell Martin. Reyes is just continually just uh, he's having one of those days and in, in his past experiences aren't helping him having trouble throwing strikes having trouble keeping the ball down it's like when he throws a good strike he gets hammered and then when he tries to make a good pitch you know he gets behind in the count and he go ahead and walk he throws the ball four so tough tough time for Reyes out on the mound you wonder how much it enters his mind that if he doesn't win this game that he has tied a major league record for futility. 28 games without a victory. I mean, you've got to be completely oblivious on purpose not to know. It's not like, you know, you talked about it with all the news and the media and everything. It's not like, uh, you know, you just get away from it. It's in your face every single day with reporters asking you about it. And Say the answers they want to hear. You know, I'm going to keep battling and try to change it, but it, it does have to eat at you. Runner goes. No. Throw to second into center field. Martin gets up. will scoop the third. Now, Molina saying that Swisher interfered with him, that he came across the plate, and now John Farrell is going to talk with Wally Bell. Let's see if he did. I think as a hitter, I don't think so. Did you uh, think so, Paul? No, I, I think the catchers use that sometimes. I mean, the ball was inside. Swisher's getting out of the way. Looks like Molina tried to step into him to almost draw contact. He's going for the foul. Yeah, tell me. yeah. It was a wide throw. Hill could not come up with it. Stepped on his foot, but you can see Molina didn't step right to home plate. He stepped into the the right-handed batter's box. I mean, there's really not any place for Swisher to go there. So now runner at third base with two outs. Swisher with a fly ball to right in the second. Old for his last 13. Molina still jawing at him back there too. 
And he yeah. stepped on his foot. Didn't make contact, but I mean, especially he's trying to get out of the way of the ball, too. So, I mean, you do have a right as a hitter to, to be in the batter's box. It's not like you got to hit the deck when they're going to throw to second. High fly ball. Left side, Knicks can't make the play. I think he's got the, the flip downs there. Maybe we better go for the wraparounds. <laughs> he's, he's really struggling with that sun. And again, it's it's easy to laugh about it up here, but if that sun is in the right spot, there's not much you can do as a fielder. Five ball left center Davis is there and that will do it Yankees get two more runs hey the heroes from last night have picked up where they left off two doubles for Granderson and a two run home run for Mark to share it's five of the Yankees at the three quit line quiz who's the only player to hit at least 60 home runs with both the Yankees and the Blue Jays I think I know that I know one of them. There's, oh, wait. There's only one. There's the only player. So if you know it. one, you know the answer. I got this one. Really? Yeah. All right, we'll find out in the bottom of the fourth. Flip if it back up. Right. I want to I reread that. I went through it awful quick. <laughs> I want to throw my answer out there, and it didn't even qualify. Bautista shows bunt the Yankees. Oh, please bunt the count on one. Here it is. Who's the only player to hit at least 60 home runs about the Yankees and the Blue Jays? I got it. I got this one. You really I do? I feel real good about it. Yeah. I I think I have it, but I'm not sure I feel that great about it. The 0 1. 0 and 2. Five nothing Yankees. Rubber game with his three game set. Hammered that one foul. the Delta League leaders run scored Bautista one ahead of Curtis Granderson and you got Cabrera and Joey Votto the Cincinnati Reds seeing him soon huh? just a bit outside <laughs> Russell Martin did his best he still couldn't come close to that See has really kept them off balance again. I mean, you're talking about a Jose Bautista hasn't even had good swings. I mean, here's a guy that's leading the American League in almost everything. So he's kept the ball down. He's mixed up his speeds. Good split finger and had a good enough fastball today to get it over when he needs to. And he's thrown that slider twice in this event. I would think, Paul, that a, a pitcher like Garcia, the bigger lead that you get him, the tougher it is on the other team because they're going to get anxious, and he could play that anxiousness against them. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's smart enough to know that, too. And, uh, you know, I think he's caught Bautista. Oh! Caught him in the back there. Yeah, he caught him in the back. Sorry. Didn't mean to jinx you. But, I, I, you know, other than that home run that he hit off Cologne early in the first inning, game one, Bautista has had some tough at bats, and you just have not seen that from him all year. Well, it's time for the Toyota text call. Today's question is, which of these American League East players would you least like to face with the game on the line? You can text your vote to 58772, and standard text messaging rates apply. Here are your choices. Is it Bautista? Is it Adrian Gonzalez? Is it Vlad Guerrero? Is it Eva Mongoria? Obviously, they left the Yankees out. Yeah, that might be a little hometown uh, cooking there. But, you know, those top two guys are both both good hitters. I think Vlad Guerrero, I mean, his strike zone, you can expand a lot. I'd say Gonzalez has been hot. Bautista's done it all year, so. Hey. 
Ron Rivera, originally signed by the Yankees, made his major league debut on September 4th of 2001 against the Blue Jays, and his debut was replacing Paul O'Neill in right field. Yeah. Did he get hurt like a week later or something? He hit a golf cart or something. Remember I that? think he did. Yeah, yeah he ran into was, a golf cart. It was parked out in the left field fence or something. I think the the rider of the golf cart got into some trouble. You know what's funny though? It, you tell these stories and all of a sudden it takes me back to where I was at the time and, and, and I, I remember we were I was taking my first vacation after retiring. Uh, we, I came in to do a couple games and Rivera gets hurt and we're heading down to uh, uh, Myrtle Beach down in South Carolina. I've never been there in my life. 100 degrees in July. I don't know why we went there in July. Emily was. Jo yeah exactly. She, she had some friends down there to go with. But Joe Torre calls me in the office and says um, how long would it take you to get ready. Wow. And I, I thought he was joking. He said, no, seriously, how long will it take to get ready? Snap throw to first. Boy, nice play by Teixeira. He said, I, I, I said, I, I don't know. And uh, he said, we'll talk it over with Neville and see what happens. So uh, we go down. Well, I'm on the beach. Now, what month is this, July? Yeah, it's like in July. Uh, 2002. Yeah, I, yes, it is July because I remember. Actually, this brings another story. Frank and Mayor were down there with us. I was on the beach on July 4th. Getting dive bombed by mosquitoes, wondering why people vacation down here in the middle of July. And I'm out there throwing the ball and running sprints with Andy on the beach, thinking, you know, this is kind of weird. And then they ended up getting Raul Mondesi. So they must have had a scout down there on the beach, didn't think I could do it. Anymore. Did you actually? Did you actually consider it? Well, I did consider it because it's. It, I mean, it's kind of flattering to think, hey, you know, I could just come in for a half a year and fill in. But it did happen. And from what I hear, Joe Torre's in the ballpark today, so he could come up here and, and, and tell you. Juan Rivera swings and misses. I have never heard that story. Yeah, I was running sprints on the beach and chucking the ball as far as I could on the beach with Andy. Were you excited about the possibility? Uh, yeah, it was kind of, I mean, I had my head spinning a little bit. I, here I am on vacation and I'm trying to lock into thinking maybe I could go play another month or so, but you know, things happen for a reason. And, uh, you could they, have asked for big bucks too. Uh, obviously not. They went and signed somebody the next day. And I, <laughs> they didn't like the way I was running on the beach, I told you. <laughs> Jose Molina swings and misses. Runner goes, and they get Bautista. We talked about it. I mean, that Farrell said he's going to run in awkward times when you're down five to nothing. Paul, that doesn't make sense, though, to run there. Yeah, well, I mean, every once in a while, and I think you've seen the game change a little bit lately. It used to be the old school. If you're losing, you never steal. But with two outs, Rivera up, I mean, your chances of a home run or something are, you know, it's much easier to score runs if you think you can steal a base by just a single. Until you get caught, then you look bad, right? Popped up. Right field. And Swisher makes the play. So in the fourth, we learned that Paul O'Neill might have come back in 2002, and the Blue Jays go down in order. to MLB.tv today to see Yankees games live or on demand on your computer and your favorite devices. Visit Yankees.com to order and get more details. MLB.tv, baseball everywhere. Well, that's going to do it for JoJo Reyes as John Farrell makes the call to the bullpen, brought to you by AT&T, and they'll bring on the rookie left-hander, Luis Perez. It's funny you look at Reyes and I don't even know the kid but you feel sorry for him for what he's going through and it's got to be tough and you know the average fan is like you know well, he's a major league base player, baseball player he's living the life but you know if you take this game serious because it is serious because it is your life I mean numbers and streaks and things that he's going through I mean they, they affect your life. Although he's just tied the major league record because he's not getting a win in this game. So 28 straight starts without a victory. Dates back to June 13th of 2008. Here's Andrew Jones, a two-run home run in the second inning. Pitch outside. Now you're ready to fire off your answer to that trivia question? Mm -hmm. All right, wait a second. I want to refresh everybody's memory. Ground ball to Escobar, and he can't make the play. So a base hit for Andrew Jones. 
All right, this is the um, New York State Smokers Quit Line Quiz. Who's the only player, Paul, that had at least 60 home runs above the Yankees and the Blue Jays? I say Dave Winfield. I say Jesse Barfield. That's oh! You cheated. I, I, was, didn't I cheat. walked out the room. Somebody <laughs> told you in your ear. I did not. I really thought it was him. He had some arms. He did. Wow. How many Winfield had? He didn't have 60 he home was, runs? He wasn't with uh, Toronto that long. And he was with him late in his career. Make excuses. I screwed it up. That's all right. Nunez hits one to left field. Patterson is there. Makes the play. You know who um, Jesse Barfield was traded for? Al Leiter. Al Leiter. That's right. I mean, we just saw Nunez fly out. What, if you're Joe Girardi, what are your plans? Are you're, you're starting to give Derek some days off as DH. You're, you're giving Alex some days as DH. What would be your goal for Nunez at bat-wise, game-wise? Actually playing in the field, I'd say he probably wanted to play 40 to 50 games, maybe 25 at short, 25 at third. That's a lot. That's a lot. 40 games? So you're, you're talking about trying to get him 200 at bat? Yeah, I, they like it. And I think that he's more valuable by playing there. Right. You know, well, if you're going to take a kid and sit him on the bench, and you can't expect him to sure. produce when you just plug him in there. Mm -hmm. That's a big question, you know, you have with some of the young phenoms, the catcher down in the minor leagues. You know, they, you can't bring him up as well as Russell Martin's doing. Just sitting, playing once a week or so. It, it's very tough. And, and I was in that situation as a minor leaguer. Very frustrating as a minor league or a young kid where you think you're ready to play and there's just there's no room for you. It so happens I was having one of my career years in the minor leagues and Dave Parker was the everyday right fielder in Cincinnati and he's making the All Star team every year. So what are you going to come up and take his job? No. There's a start. Yankees like Nunez so much that they would not include him in the deal last year to try to get close to On the Mariners. Yankees playing the Mariners over the weekend, three games in Seattle. You know, we talked about this earlier, Paul. I'm not making that trip, but I'm going to be watching the games. The first two games, Michael Pineda is going to start. On Friday, and then Felix Hernandez will start on Saturday. Those are two of the best young pitchers in baseball. Mm -hmm. Felix Hernandez is a Cy Young winner, so those are games you have to watch. Right. And, I mean, everybody's watching now because he's the guy that you, you think of an organization goes out and gets a pitcher to get him over the top. First, everybody's first choice is Felix Hernandez. Mm -hmm. Just thinking back on what you said about the 25 games, Nunez at shortstop and third base. Alex Rodriguez to me is much more comfortable in the DH role than Derek Jeter at this point. 2 2. Wow. You know, you just look at Alex, and he's a home run hitter, he's a power hitter, he gets his work in. Obviously, I know he's still an everyday third baseman, but Derek Jeter is just so used to being. Out there in the rhythm of the game, it just seems to me like it'd be a much harder thing. Well, I know it's a much harder thing. I've talked to him about it a little bit uh, at that DH role, but it is something. And if you do it enough, I guess you do get a rhythm and a, and a way of getting getting through. Nice play by Perez with the runner going. So Jeter is out, and Andrew Jones moves to second. And off balance, but still made the play. So early in the game, Derek, you know, shot that ball to right field, lead off with a double, and you know that at bat right there, you know, he didn't have the balance he had that the first inning. He was kind of looking; it looked like he was looking in a little bit, front hip opening up, and you just see there's nothing behind that that swing, and, and that that happens as hitters. I mean, every single at bat can't be your best. Curtis Granderson, you just go up and hit doubles or home runs every time you walk to the plate. Right? It's been amazing. Two doubles and two at bats today. Now, I mean, you, you, 
you just watch him hit and how close he is and how calm he is. It's just like nothing's in a hurry. That pitch right there, if you're struggling, you're lunging a little bit, you might swing at. It's just like he has all the time in the world to read whether strike or ball and what he wants to do with it. That one's off the glove of Rivera, and he flips the Perez covering, and they finally retire Granderson, and that'll do it here in the fourth. No runs to hit, no errors, and one man left on base. We play four, Yankees are up 5 nothing. As we go to the fifth inning, Aaron Hill will lead off against Freddie Garcia. And the pitch is high. Let's check out the Home Depot hitter scouting report on Aaron Hill. A home run drought. I mean, this is a terrible thing to go through as a player, but he hasn't had a home run since September of last year. Return to form. I mean, he's, a, he's an ex All Star. 2009, 36 home runs and drove in 108 runs and stay healthy. I mean, that's a big part of it, obviously. He was out early in this year with a hamstring injury, he had a concussion in 2008. Do some things when he's healthy. The 2 0. -oh. On the Kia scoreboard, it's 5 0 as we go to the top of the fourth. Nothing Yankees lead. This is the happy zone of the year for Freddie Garcia. From April, or should I say May 5th of last season to July 18th, when he was at the White Sox, he was 9 and 1 with a 3.94. So the Yankees would like some of that. Like said he? I guess. One win. Slow roller to first. To Sharon will take it himself. He beats Thames to the bag too well. So who's gonna take this? To Sharon does the right thing though. He's always why make the throw if you don't need to? A little dance move there. Yes, it was the um, the finale for Dancing with the Stars, would you ever do that, Paul, if they came call? My wife says no. She said you wouldn't do it? Yeah, she said I, I wouldn't have a chance. I said, you know, I took it. And my daughter thinks it's hilarious because every once in a while, my daughter's a dancer, right? So right. every once in a while, screw around in the kitchen and dance around, and she just shakes her hands like, no, don't even do it. So it'd be hard. You know, I, that one dunks in there. Rajay Davis will pick up a double. Well, let me put it this way, Paul. I do the radio show for ESPN New York 1050. I am pleading with the people at ESPN ABC to call you to be on the next dance with the Pleading. Really? I would give up some of my salary to see you on that show. I'm going to start training. I'm going to Fred Astaire when I get home. Start training a little bit. Huh? Heinz Ward won yesterday. All these ex stars win. And Emmett Smith won. Yeah, Jerry Rice. I know. They're, they're, they're good, though. Yeah. So I, I just wonder is that something you can learn, or is it. Well, you're an athlete. Does that go into dancing? I don't know. It seems like it does with all these football players, would it? Yeah, there has been no baseball player. No. Right? What's up with that? Well, because it's in the middle of baseball season. You're retired. And well, those guys work are here. Heinz Ward doesn't play anymore, does he? Didn't he retire? No, he's oh, he's still, still active. I thought he retired. No. He's locked out right now. Well, yeah, well, they're all retired at this point. <laughs> I mean, we could get you some time off it, yes. <laughs> Uh, I, I, it would be the highest rated show of all time. Yeah. For one episode, because I might be gone, right? <laughs> that one has popped up. Shallow right. Long run for Cano. Smoothly makes the play for the final out of the fifth. No run to hit. No errors. And one man left. Disney, call up O'Neill for Dancing with the Stars, please.
Deck presented by Blimpy reliever David Robertson and former ace David Wells play bow and arrow baseball. You won't believe what happens. Plus, Derek Jeter with the latest captain's quiz. It's a new Yankees on deck this Sunday at noon only on this. Shadow the blimp. I get the blimp to take me home. That'd be cool, right? I don't know if it'd be very fast. <laughs> it might take a while. Yes. To share with a high fly ball to left center. And Rajay Davis makes the play. <laughs> you see the angle of the ball in left field. And it, anytime the center field can get over there and give you a little help, left fielder's not going to complain whatsoever. Yeah. Let's just take an angle. Stay away from it. If you don't get close to it, they'll never think you can catch it, right? People will forget, but uh, when you got here, you played left field the first year. I did. The Sun Field over in the old stadium. Danny Tartable was in right. That on the Danny Tartable so, uh, Seinfeld yesterday. I, he's in probably my top two or three guys humor wise that I ever played with. Really? Oh, he was one of the most fun teammates I ever played with. Somebody yelled ouch. I wonder if it was <laughs> Alex yeah. anticipating getting hit. Yeah, that's usually the hitter. You just trying to get out of the way and you expect it to hit you and it doesn't. Count one and two. Luis Perez comes on for Jojo Reyes. Reyes went three innings, gave up the five runs. You still getting your Seinfeld checks? Yeah, it's like 53, 54 dollars when it's there for the Screen Actors so Guild. They just send it to the house. Yeah. You get a couple of those a year or what? Yeah, it's not like they come in every day or something. You you do get a couple a year. You know, it's more of a, a joke when you get them. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Check swing. Did he go? Yes, he did. So Alex down on strikes. Just out in front a little bit, kind of waving at that ball. Got out there too far, especially in a five-nothing game on the travel day. Tendency for that umpire to call that a swing. Now, Michael, you talked about the importance of yesterday's game and how it's rolled into it. You know, you end up, you know, things go on the way they are right now. Winning two out of three here from the Blue Jays, and you look at this next trip. Probably one of the tougher trips you'll have all year. You go out and play nine or ten days out on the West Coast. A lot of things can happen. It's an important time, important stretch for the Yankees right now. And they hit all three stops. They'll play in Seattle, Oakland, and Anaheim. And that whole National American League West is really bunched up. Nobody's running away with anything, so they're all still in it. And we mentioned the, the first two starting pitchers for the Mariners are two guys that have really generated a lot of buzz around baseball. Slow rolling to short, charging is Escobar, and he gets Cano for the final out of the fifth inning. Yankees go down in order, one, two, three, and we will go to the sixth with the Yankees up five nothing. And on Sunday, June 12th, when the Yankees take on the Red Hot Indians, it's that day. The first 10,000 guests, 14 and younger, will receive a mark to share a bat courtesy of Bank of America. For tickets, log on to Yankees.com. Visit the Yankee Stadium ticket window. Yankees clubhouse shops or call Ticketmaster at 877-469-9849. Party deck here at Yankee Stadium. The, the cool thing when I was growing up, Paul, when they had bat day at the stadium, it wasn't one player. They handed out all player bats. And that was almost part of the training ah. thing. Oh, you got a Horace Clark? Well, wow. I want a Bobby Mercer. I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. Oh, it was very cool. So you could actually come in and get your bat, be outside and look at your player and be disappointed. Yes, exactly. And that, that's what life is about, Paul. You're going to have a lot of, <laughs> a lot disappointments, of disappointments in life. That's so right. if you got yourself a Jerry Kenny, 
when you really wanted a Bobby Mercer, you were crushed the entire day. And I know Bobby was your idol, so you wanted the Bobby Mercer. And I never got the Bobby Mercer, and then when I started working with him, he actually signed a bat, and he said, here, you finally got it. <laughs> I would, like, get in line, and if you didn't like the bat coming up, just kind of cough and move back a couple spaces until you saw Bobby Mercer in line, see? You could do that in New York. Maybe you could pull that since That didn't work here? you get thrown out. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are always trying to ditch line. You're not trying to move backwards, right? The one two. Now the things that I've learned today, everybody, I, I mean I'm so thrilled to be doing this game with Paul. I, I learned that Joe Torrey asked him to come back in 2002, or at least think about it. Never knew that. He mentioned it. Yeah. He mentioned it. And you okay. warmed up on the beach in Myrtle Beach and didn't go well. Right. Go ahead. There's a ground ball a second. Cano is there. I also learned that you'd probably be somewhat amenable to being on Dancing with the Stars. And then I find out during the break that you were actually asked to be on Donald Trump's Celebrity Apprentice. Well, that was a few years ago, though. And you turned him down? Why? No, because it, it, there was a lot of time, and the time it didn't, it, it involved being in New York for a specific amount of time, and it, it, I wasn't, I, I couldn't do it. But Donald Trump, I mean, I, I, I like the guy. He's a good, he's my golf partner. I played some golf matches with him. He's a good partner, too. He's good. So, uh. So that's still on the table if, if the time no, works I think out. That, I don't think I'd be good at that table, to tell you the truth. I'd get fired from that, You'd too. You'd flip it over. <laughs> fired? <laughs> I, did, I, I watched this last one. I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. Now, who won? Was it John Rich. Or John, John, John Rich. John Rich. Won? Yeah. Country singer. From Big and Rich. Mm -hmm. Meatloaf was on that one. Gary oh, Busey. Oh, was he? Yeah, Gary Busey. Yeah. The all won. One and one. And we find out you get $541 every couple of months. No, from Seinfeld. $54. Oh, $54. Oh, I'm sorry. 54 bucks. Yeah. Now, do you actually go to the bank and cash that check? Uh, yeah. And you I get mean, the 54 bucks, you put it into your account. It goes into my savings, which. It's like a Christmas card. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I didn't realize why my wife's accounts have much more savings than mine do. Is there a reason for that? I'm not sure. Yeah? You're starting to know these things a little bit more now that we talk about it, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. But there's no there's no conflict at all so far. It's, it's early. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're sitting up here just blabbing away, and Freddie Garcia's throwing a gem here. I mean, he's got these guys off balance. He's keeping the ball low. Talked about his last five outings haven't been his best, but this is back to the first couple games of the year where he kept the ball down and kept people off base. Patterson so far 0 for 2. And Garcia with a 3 2 count. And the right hander deals. Lined in the right field. And that's going to be a base hit. It goes to the auxiliary scoreboard, playing it out there as Granderson. And he'll fire to second, but there already is Patterson with a double. Look at that swing at the Michael Jordan Look invitation. At that. God, don't show the putt. I know it didn't go in. Well, I see. made one putt the whole time for an eagle. That had to be it. Oh, oh yeah, that wasn't it. <laughs> so close. There was That's my not drive. A good line. Yeah. See. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought, you know what? Let me tell you about this tournament. You had to hit your partner's ball sometime. Okay. So a, a lot of times when I was in the trees, it wasn't always my fault. Was it a celebrity partner or? Yeah, it was uh, Janet Gretzky. Really? Yeah. So. That must have been awesome. You know what? I would invite you, but you told me you threw 180 up on the front <laughs> nine, so you would not be a good partner. Here's Jose Bautista. What a great event that was. So. Now you get a chance to talk with Jordan? Oh, yeah. Good He's guy. a very, very nice guy to everybody that comes out there. Good golfer, too. Beautiful venue this year out in Las Vegas. Where did those cameras come from? Huh? We've got cameras everywhere, I guess. Wow. Josh Isaac, our associate director, dug it up. Ground ball to Nunez. Two away. Bautista now four for his last 24 over his last seven games, so his first real slump of the year. 
and three of his four hits were home runs. I want to aggravate Al Leiter. Watch the swing. This is Leiter's swing. Oh, he's collapsing a little bit. That's not good. <laughs> you know, pitcher. There you go. Got the guns on. Yeah. Pitchers are supposed to be better golfers. They have far more time than we do when we're playing, right? There's Juan Rivera with a runner at second. Top of the sixth inning. Yankees up five nothing. Hammered and passed the diving Nunez. That's going to score Patterson. An RBI single for Rivera. So the Blue Jays are on the board. Yankees lead is now five to one. Rivera hit that very hard. See that ball? That's that's one of the first pitches you've seen in, in a, an important situation that he got up in the strike zone. Pretty much what Reyes did with the Blue Jays early in the game. Balls up in the strike zone. Guys are going to get great swings off of him. Balls hit hard. Andrew Dunn does the right thing. Don't even try to throw home. Just throw it to second. Down first base. The 0 1. 0 oh 2. Once in a while, you see that that's a split fingered fastball, but I mean, it drops so much that it almost looks like a curveball. And, and Freddie Garcia, every once in a while, you'll, you'll see that, that we were talking early in the game, that split finger will, there's really no rhyme or reason if it's going to go down, if it's going to slide. It, there it goes again. I mean, it's just, that's his out pitch. So Molina down on strikes. The Blue Jays score a run on two hits, one left. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. It's 5 1 Yanks. New WB Mason presents the Joe Girardi Show. This year marks the 15th anniversary of the Yankees' 1996 World Series winning season. And David Cohn will sit down with the skipper to remember the magic. It's a new Joe Girardi Show this Sunday at 8, only on Yes. Do you remember the magic? I do. I do. It's a special day. There's Russell Martin. And there's a strike. Was there a point in the season where you said we could win? I mean, yeah, there's always a, a point in the season, right? And I always. You know, as soon as you get in, in the summer months, you have a good feel of, of what this team is, is capable of doing. And you, you also get a feel of the personality of the team. You can have pretty much the same team, but every single year it kind of has a different drive or a different personality. You think you would have won in 94 without the strike? You know what? I, I, I love that team. Looking back, I mean, the camaraderie of that team was good. I remember guys Mike Stanley, Mike Gallego, Randy Velarde. Those, I mean, those were just good people, and it just came to it. seems like everything was coming together that year. Can we put that like through video and video baseball and find out if we'd won? I'm sure. The one thing, though, if you remember when the strike hit in August, uh, the Yankees were losing their lead a little bit to the. Mm -hmm. To the Orioles, you don't know if Jimmy Key would have been able to pitch. Right. Had arm problems. 3 1. Russell Martin hits one deep to left field. Backing up Patterson. He's on the track. He'll make the play in front of the wall for the first out. Remember John Wetland when he came over here because he was with uh, the Montreal Expos in 94 and they were having a great year. And we used to always kind of razz him that, you know, we had won the World Series that year and he'd come right back thinking the Expos were going to. So, you know, we all talk about the Yankees could have been rooked out of a, a World Series in 94. Baseball ended in Montreal because of that strike. Because if the Expos would have gone to the World Series, probably would have changed Could have saved the city yeah. for the, you know, baseball for that city. Here's Nick Swisher. He is 0 for 2. He needs a hit. He's 0 for his last 14. And when you go on a long road trip, you want to be able to have something good on that six hour flight to Seattle. No, he's missed a couple pitches. And, and earlier we were talking about how you get out of a, you know, kind of a season long funk is, is just to start having, you know, three, four, five good at bats in the same day. It's hard. It's easy to say, hard to do when you haven't got to that point yet. But, you know, he's missed a couple pitches early. 
Needs to just fight back and have a couple good at bats before he gets on that plane today. There's a strike. Perez came on a relief of Jojo Reyes. This is uh, Perez's third inning of work. Yankees looking for their 27th win. They're 26 and 21. Ground and foul. See, that's that's an anxious hitter right there. That's a 3-1 pitch. Obviously, you're in a hitter's count, but you know that ball's up a little bit out of the zone, and now you put yourself in a position 3-2. You know, and last year when everything was rolling right, you see that ball's up in the zone a little bit. You know, he would have taken that walk. And it, it's frustrating as a hitter because walks don't show up in your batting average, and that's what you're trying to work on. He gets a walk right there. Yankees lead the Red Sox and the Rays in the American League East. They lead everybody, obviously. The Red Sox a half came out, and the Red Sox are running away from Cleveland today. And the Rays in a rain delay. They're trailing Detroit 2 0. Blue Jays 2 and a half back. If they lose this, it'll be 3 and a half. And the Orioles hanging right there. So it's bunched up in the AL East. So here's Andrew Jones. He has two hits today. Deep drive center field. Davis back. Still back. Looking up. See ya. A home run. It's a monument part for Andrew Jones. A two-run shot, and the Yankees lead seven to one. You look it over. Andrew Jones' career, even with the Atlanta Braves in his younger days, dead fastball hitter. Loves a fastball. There used to be, you couldn't throw a fastball by him. He's a little older, but that ball right there, fastball outer half. Still shows. I mean, to get it out of here, they, they talk about yet the new Yankee Stadium being a home run ballpark, possibly the right center. I agree, but the center field, you still have to put something into it to get it out of here. Eduardo Nunez takes outside. See the difference of him. He's kind of that back leg hitter, that guy that kind of leans back. Typical home run swing. Last time that. Andrew had a two home run game May 1st of last year. Go one one. Hot shot to third. Knicks. In the second out. Bartolo Colon is going to start Monday in Oakland. Joe Girardi decided to go with CC Sabathia on Sunday in Seattle. I thought that was interesting too because it, you know, it, it, it gave him an extra day. Uh, you, know, you looked at his last start, the first five innings, he was so good. And in that sixth inning, it looked like he, you know, he got tired, his arms started dropping. By giving him that extra day, you might get him back to where, you know, he can give you seven innings. Those are the matchups this weekend. Burnett and Pineda, six and two, 2.16 throws hard. Nova against the reigning Cy Young Award winner, and then Sabathi against Jason Vargas. And I'll also get a chance to see Ichiro. How good in your mind is Ichiro? Well, I, I mean, when he came up, it didn't take me long to be impressed with it, but because he could do everything. He was so fast. I mean, his swing, everybody knows how he kind of bails out and swings. Tremendous hitter, but I mean, outfielder, defensively great arm. And just great instincts as a baseball player. And, you know, we were talking between the break. I mean, he'll probably be the first guy to be in the Hall of Fame in Japan and the U.S. He's going to get to 3,000 hits. Yeah, which is amazing when, it, when, when you played as long as he did over in Japan. Georgia, Georgia told me, or Hippolyta told me the first time that he came to the plate. You know, he came over here, he had somewhat of a language barrier, obviously. He played in Japan his whole life. And he walked up to the plate and he looked at Georgie and he said, Que pasa? <laughs> Just out of nothing, out of nowhere. Well, one day, our former colleague, Jim Cott, walked up to him behind the batting cage and he looked at Cott and he goes, my brother from another mother. <laughs> so he's got like these yeah, phrases yeah. down. 
But uh, you'll see all those games on yes this week. It should be a good series. Should be a good road trip. Interesting. Very telling. This is the old-fashioned road trip. Mm -hmm. you, know, when you, you go to the West Coast, you play every team, and you come home. And, and now, you, the last few years, you'd go out and play Oakland, then you'd come to Texas, and go, then you'd go back out later and play Anaheim. You know, this is the way it used to be, where you would go out and knock all three teams out while you're out on the West Coast. Derek Jeter works a walk. You see Perez has a little bit of trouble locating that fastball, but he has a great arm. I mean, he's been in the mid 90s. That was 92 there with a lot of movement. Yankees make two West Coast trips this year. This one upcoming, and then they have one in September, which is kind of odd to have it in September. And that'll be weird because you play two West Coast teams, and then on your way back, you play Toronto. Yeah. There's Curtis Granderson. He is two for three with two doubles. Pitch inside. You see a lot of movement on Perez's fastball. And it, looking back, the only straight ball that he's thrown is, is the ball that went out to dead center field off Andrew Jones' bat. And it got Granderson on the way by. If you're going to get hit, that's the way. Jeter will move to second. Wow, got him on the shirt. Now we'll see the shirt on Yesmo. Oh, that's the way to go. Bruce Walton talking things over. With Paris. This copyright of telecast presented by authority of the New York Yankees and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the New York Yankees. Mark Teixeira reached on an E4 in the first, then a bullet home run to left, a two-run shot in the third, then flat out to center in the fifth. First and second for the Yankees are up seven to one. Off Changed speed. It. Teixeira hit well against Toronto so far this year. 367, three homers and six ribbies. Mark at 256, 13 home runs and 32 runs batted in. Reaching base 36.7% of the time, on base percentage, closing on 370. There's a ground ball to short. Backhanded by Escobar. He goes the short way. And Hill somehow kept his foot on the bag to get the force. But the A's get two runs on Andrew Jones' home run. In fact, today, Andrew Jones has two home runs. That's the one in the second. And this one's a dead center field. Lands in Monument Park. It gives the Yankees a 7 1 lead. The week is presented by Kia Motors. To learn more, visit Kia.com. Nice way to spend the day on a boat. And if you're not on the boat, we thank you for spending it with us here on the Yes Network. At Yankee Stadium. I need to adjust our TV. Or is that River Brown? It's for Brown. It. <laughs> is that for a reason? A lot cleaner than it used to be. <laughs> Cadillac scoreboard 7 to 1. Yankees over the Blue Jays. Aaron Hill takes a strike from Freddie Garcia. Line to left field. It's a base hit. Andrew Jones fields and. Comes up throwing. No, that's not Andrew out there. Now they, they have replaced Andrew with Chris Dickerson. So Dickerson makes a throw in. Again, you see, as good as Garcia has been all day, when he misses up in the zone, he does not have that overpowering stuff. And again, this is a pitch that he missed up in the zone. Base hit. Some ball just that's a split finger just kind of hanging. When he gets it down, it has great movement. 
just shows you how how good he's been today because when he misses up it gets hit hard and you know he's given up five hits in one run and on his game today. Eric Thames 0 for 2. Count one and one. That one is driven into right center field. That's going to be a base hit, and it's going to go to the wall. Aaron Hill is at third. They're going to wave him home. They'll score easily. It's an RBI double for Eric Thames, and the Yankees now lead seven to two. So, Michael, you said Thames. I mean, this ball again, off speed pitch, kind of down the middle of the plate, hit hard. Brian Butterfield, you, you make sure that Aaron Hill, after you're just coming off in a hamstring injury, you make sure he's got plenty of time to score. So Thames picks up his fourth RBI since being called up from AAA Las Vegas, and here is Rajay Davis. Count one and oh. You know how you look at some players and just think that they they could do a lot for a team and, and, and Rajay Davis comes to mind. I mean his speed and, and his defense is really good where you know if he could hit 280 and he'd score a lot of runs and really really help this team right now he's at 263. Robertson warming for the eggs. Now, Paul, I'm here a lot more than you are here at the ballpark, but you're a little bit more observant than I am. So let me ask you something. Looking at the Yankee bullpen, and I see a big bench that's in front of the wall where the players could sit. I, I've never seen that there before. Have you? No, it's new. It is new. So they, I guess when the weather got nice, they. That's what it's all about. Just sitting there hanging out, watching the game. I like it. The one, two. Punched out right side. To share a bobbles, and that cost him the play. Rajay Davis is too fast. Let's talk about speed right there. And that's why you see big swings from guys with that. Go to speed, it frustrates you as, a, as an organization because you want the ball on the ground. You want the ball, you want the infielders to move to make mistakes. I mean, that, that's not even close. That's Mark Teixeira knocks it down you know, nine times out of ten. You just flip, tag out. I mean, that isn't even close. I'm not sure that Garcia would have gotten there, even if he did bobble. He just beat Garcia to the back. Like he was in about fourth gear there, and like he had another one to go to. I think they're going to give him a hit on that. It is a base hit. So first and third, still nobody out. There's Jason Nix. Rajay Davis goes. No throw, stolen base. Well, again, with no outs down five runs, does that surprise you that Davis would steal? No, because um, because I think he knew he was going to make it without the throw. They didn't want to have the guy drop, come from third. So mm -hmm. no, it doesn't surprise me. I, I have no problem. And if I was a manager, I, I think I would run more when I'm down. In the old school, you always never get thrown out. But I, you know, I think that add a couple runs here, a couple runs there. There's a run back in the game. And now it's seven three as Davis moves to third. Fame scores. So now on another out, you can make it seven four. Exactly. So you know, I think sometimes it's worth a chance. Obviously, you don't want uh, your non-base stealers trying to steal bases when you're down. But you know, guys that are good at it, that you trust, are going to get good jumps and steal and make it. I, I don't think that you have to necessarily shut down the running game when you when you get behind. 
Well, now Joe Girardi is going to go to his bullpen. Freddie Garcia gives him six and a third. Leaves a runner on third base with one out. Yet he's up seven to three. Garcia gets a nice hand from the crowd. And David Robertson will jog in and face Yumel Escobar. This game still hanging in the balance with the Yankees leading by four. Players, would you least like to face with the game on the line? You've been voting at 58-772. And let's see how you voted. 49% don't want to see Jose Bautista. Adrian Gonzalez, 36%. Guerrero, 10%. Longoria, 5%. I think I'd rather face Guerrero than Longoria. Yeah. But you can't argue with the other votes. Freddy Garcia, good outing. Got a lead early. You can tell he was just starting to get a little tired, starting to leave some balls up. But again, I mean, uh, Freddy Garcia is not your number one starter anymore. Get six and a third from him with a lead. You got to feel pretty happy if you're Larry Rothschild or Joe Girardi. Runner at third base with one out. Yankees play the infield back except for Teixeira. Now Nunez is coming in as well. And the ground ball is to Nunez. And they have him in a rundown. And the out is made. And moving to second is Escobar. Nice play by Nunez. Heads up. He ran right at Rajay Davis. Nunez took an angle where Davis was going to go back. You see, he's almost going on contact, but right here, he took an angle straight back. Which really was the key to the play to make the out. It's time for the G Capital Partner play. Great partnerships are built on trust at G Capital. We prove that every day. And you know, makes the play, knows he's, but if he lets that ball go to home, Davis will get back to third. But he cut him off, took the angle away. What do you call that, Michael, in the old days? Is that a hot box or is that a pickle? Depends on where you I are. You get in the a pickle. You know, pickle? See, yeah. in the Midwest, you're in the hot box. You ever play hot box? No. no. Just intentionally did that out in the backyard to three people. Somebody was in the middle and you had to, you had to get him out. Called it hot box. You had to get him out. Yeah. We called it, we had a game in the Bronx called Monkey in the Middle. Were you the monkey? Well, you try, if you were a monkey, you were the monkey in the middle, you, you would try to, to, you know, you throw a ball back and forth and you try to intercept it. So the guy who threw it, he would become the monkey. I think I played that game. That, that, I didn't like that game. <laughs> I mean, you just throw it high over the guy's head, you, there's no chance. Well, not everybody is as good an athlete as you. I think in those days, I don't know, so it's over. <laughs> On that beach in Myrtle Beach. Yeah, exactly. That was my last shot. Man on second, runner in scoring position. Big out here. You know, you four runs, you still. Uh, good job by Robertson. Good job indeed as he leaves the runner stranded at third. But the Blue Jays scored two runs on three hits. One man left at the end of six and a half. Time for the seventh inning stretch. Yankees lead the Blue Jays 7 3. But we're going to stay right here to honor America in the Bronx. Offer a moment of silent prayer. As we remember the service men and women who are serving our country at home and around the globe. Thank you. Now join in Kate Smith's rendition of God Bless America.
brought to you by Verizon Fios. Get the ultimate in entertainment on the Ultimate Network Fios. A network ahead. This is a game I'm tuning in for on Friday. AJ Burnett, five and three, four point oh two, and Michael Pineda. He's a talk of baseball. He can really bring it. Throws hard. Six and two, two point one six. Our coverage begins at nine thirty on Yes Game Time, right around ten oh five. Cadillac scoreboard seven three. Yankees lead. New shortstop for the Blue Jays. John McDonald takes over for Yumel Escobar. Luis Perez still in there. He deals outside to Alex Rodriguez. Popped up. Long balls help the Yankees today. Two home runs, two run shots each by Andrew Jones, then a two run shot by Mark Teixeira. So six right there out of the seven. Java Chamberlain warming for the Yankees. You so gave the stats of A Rod how hot he was, you know, coming into this series. And it, usually you progressively, you know, have a couple. Couple of bats here or there, but you know he hasn't had a, a series at the plate that you expected the way he came into this this series. There's a base hit. See, talk about it. He wakes up, smokes one in the left. Leadoff single for Alex Rodriguez. Aerial coverage today brought to you by Direct TV. Get every MLB game and the most in HD. Call 1-800 Direct TV. This was the view from above on Andrew Jones home run. What a great shot settling right into Monument Park. Good job by the, the crew in the blimp. Being able to follow that baseball so beautifully. Here's Robinson Cano. Grounded through the left side for a base hit. So Cano with his first hit of the afternoon. First and second, nobody out. You know, the first night we looked at his swing in slow motion, and last night he had the most perfect swings last night. You can just see Robbie Cano get real close to going on one of those tears again where he just has good at bat after good at bat. His bat stand level through the zone. This is a high pitch, too. Off a lefty, just drive it the other way. Good swing. Here's Russell Martin. He's walked twice and flied out to left. Leads all major league catchers with nine home runs. Got something in his eye. Wally Bell quickly called timeout. Sean Camp warming for the Blue Jays. Pitch outside. Good to see the Yankees. You know, you, you give the Blue Jays, a, they get back in the game, so to speak, scores a couple runs, and all of a sudden, offensively, you're right back at them. A couple base hits, setting up scoring. The same again. He's got a very important text, Michael. From my son Aaron. I'm officially out of high school for his last exam. Wow. Remember that day? Huh? What a relief, right? Good times. Yeah. He's going to college, too. He's Absolutely. going to a tough college. Yeah. Tougher on him. <laughs> Might have to open a book or two. Huh? Furman, right? Right. The 1-1. One -one. Oh! Popped up. Infield fly was called, but Rivera puts it away. Time for the game summary brought to you by your local Nissan dealer. 
Seven, nine, and zero, leading three, eight, and two. Andrew Jones is three for three, two home runs and four ribbies. Teixeira, one for four, two run home run. Freddy Garcia, six and a third. He's the pitcher of record on the winning side. Eight hits, three runs. Didn't walk a batter. That's important. And four strikeouts. Go back to the losing side, Michael. What we have at stake here, too. Reyes. That's right. He will tie the major league record 28 straight starts without a win. So Aaron's going to have to open up the books, and let's be honest, you're going to have to open up the checkbook. <laughs> yeah, that usually goes hand in hand, right? College is expensive now. I mean, you, you look at Perez and I mean, how he throws the ball, what kind of movement he gets on the ball. This is a kid that, you know, you, you just hope he can really, really zone in on the strike zone because when he's in that, when he has that velocity and, and movement, it can be tough. That one's out of play. Just throws a lot of fastballs. It looks like for him to be really, really nasty on lefties, he's going to have to learn. You know, either either to cut that fastball or to throw a good slider. It's a job of your pitching coach and obviously your manager. That must be kind of weird being a an ex pitching coach. You come to manager, then you hire another pitching coach. You know, and you can't second guess. You got to be on the same page as um, what's going on with your pitchers. I wonder how that works, Paul, because John Farrell was considered such an outstanding pitching coach. And since that's a strength of it, it's almost like in football. You know, Rex Ryan, he, he's a big part of the Jet defense right. because he was a great defensive mind. Just because of the head coach, he hasn't backed off. I think Farrell has to have say. Yeah, I think you do have say. I mean, you're the manager, but you 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 always are going to have that feeling like, you know, this is this is what I know, but you do have to trust somebody, but you have so many other jobs as a manager that you have to, you know, you, you do have to delegate some stuff out. Count three and two to switch. The switch is 0 for 2 today with a walk and a run scored. Well, you look back, I, and I, you might know this, I don't know, to tell you the truth. Uh, you look back at the history of baseball, I mean, back in the 40s, 50s, I mean, did they have pitching coach, hitting coach? Did they have all these coaches like they do today? No, they did not have specialized coaches like that. They had coaches, they had first base coaches. Too. That was it. But I think that was pretty much it. And the manager pretty much probably helped the pitchers and the, I mean, pretty much did everything. A little conference on the mound. It amazes me that Jose Molina just covered his mask with his glove <laughs> as if we could actually read his lips through the mask and in another language. <laughs> You can't even see his mouth, and he still covered his, his, his face. Want to let those secrets out out there, especially with runners in scoring position. Runners go. Swing and a miss. And another frustrating day for Nick Swisher. And you know, sometimes a you know a change of scenery can help. Maybe going out to the West Coast, but again, as a hitter, you you love these opportunities, drive-in runs. Then you swing through a fastball. Looks like he almost fouled tip. It looks like he did foul tip it into the catcher's glove. Well, they're saying that he held on to it long enough. And he dropped it on the transfer. So a double steal. Alex with the stolen base and Cano with one as well. Here's Chris Dickerson, who was brought in for defense. Andrew Jones had a great day. That's that slider I was talking about earlier to lefties. I mean that, you know, if you're a lefty watching Perez pitch, you're coming up, you're thinking nothing but fastballs, and then he'll lock you up with that slider right there. If he can learn to throw that for a strike and still have that good fastball, then he's going to be able to bury that fastball in under the hands of lefties. Another good slider. You wonder if there's something wrong. With Jones, now I know Jones is, is far from the player he was defensively, but with with the lead that they had, why would they bring in Dickerson for Jones? And now he has to face his lefty, and didn't look good doing it. 
as he swings and misses. Molina gets an angle, makes the play, and that'll do it. So the Yankees leave two runners on. They pick up two more hits. We go to the eighth. The Yankees lead seven to three. Hurry up, get there. Music and Computer World, and by Ford, the official truck of the New York Yankees. Yankees lead this one by a score of seven to three. So it's going to make it difficult. But today, throughout the Yankee season on yes, we're asking you to vote along with us for the Chevy player of the game. Text your vote to five eight seven seven two or vote online at yesnetwork.com. Today's candidates are all worthy. Number one, Freddie Garcia. Number two, Andrew Jones. Number three. Mark Teixeira, number four, Curtis Granderson. Vote now and make your voice heard. Standard text messaging rate supply. Who you vote for? Right, Andrew Jones hit two home runs. A huh? little spot start, two home runs, one in Monument Park. I think I got to give it to him. I think I would agree with you. Job Chamberlain comes on. He's going to pitch the eighth. Yeah, the 23 innings and four walks. Pretty darn good. Job of Chamberlain this year. Jose Bautista shows bunt, takes outside. Bautista 0 for 2 and was hit by a pitch. Yesterday he was 0 for 4. See the Hyundai scoreboard 7 3. He had a home run his first time up in the first game. And since then the Yankees have handled him. They walked him, they intentionally walked him. And since then he has not gotten a hit. You know, it's amazing. 97 right there. It's amazing to think, though, you know, we were talking the first game when, you know, where the, the Blue Jays won that, you know, they're close. They're a very good team. But you take, you know, some of his offensive numbers out of this lineup, and they're a completely different team. And can you expect him to hit 350 and hit 50 home runs every year? I don't know. That one is hammered down the left field line. Brett Gardner in for defense. We'll play it off the wall. Bautista makes a big turn. He'll stop right there. So Gardner in and left, and Dickerson moves from left to right as Swisher gets the rest of the day off. I just love Bautista's swing. You just see he's ready. He gets that foot down with that leg kick. He's got great balance. See that knee comes back. The hip stays square. Boy, he gets through the ball. That's pretty high leg kick, right? Yeah. Yeah, you have to have a lot of balance to be able to use that. Big advantage, though, if you can, because it keeps your weight back, keeps you behind the ball. Java deals breaking ball. You know Paul mentioned the uh, the Blue Jay offense and I know Adam Lind is out and I don't mean to, to pick on one specific person but the the true evaluation of your lineup is Jose Molina is batting fifth. Right. And when he's on the Yankees every time he played he batted ninth and that's really the type of player Jose is. He's a defensive player and they're batting a fifth. So this is a team that's going to struggle to score runs. That's why they they run it all at all times in any situation. I just wonder if, you know, John Farrell wanted to keep everybody as is. I mean, Jose Molina doesn't play every day. Aaron Sevilla had a great series, got some big hits, drove in some runs. But you're right, it, it, it does kind of jump out at you when uh, Molina's hitting fifth. Molina was eight for 20 against Garcia. I'm sure that had something to do with it, but he's still not considered a real good hitter. Top of 96 out of the zone. Grounded to short. Cheater goes to second one. On to first. It's a double play. Good double play there. Jeet gives him a good feed. And Robbie Cano, his I mean, just getting rid of the ball at second base, he is so good at. That leg out of the way with Bautista sliding in there. Cano has several ways that he protects himself. Sometimes he'll just scoot toward the shortstop side. Sometimes he'll stop and go up in the air. That time he used the bag to protect himself. And as Paul said, kicked his leg up. 
So he backs up. He needs to go overhand there, so he had to get his leg over. A lot of times, as a second baseman, he'll drop down so low as a runner. When you're coming in there and you see that guy down low with the ball, you've got to get down. Foul back to the screen. See, Robbie steps back, uses the bag as protection, and then does a little balletic move. Bobby might actually battle you for a spot on yeah, the stars. I figured it didn't take long. <laughs> Bobby can do a lot of things. I know that, especially on a baseball field. I mean, look at it. Right? Does he have a weakness? No. He's a great fielder, great hitter. He really doesn't have a hole at the plate that he can't handle. It's not a weakness, but I guess he's not ultra fast. Yeah, it doesn't not a base deal. But he's certainly not slow, doesn't clog up the bases. And he's pretty good. I'd say I mean I, I just I love to watch him hit. I mean, I've seen him three, four years now and I still look forward to when he goes up to the plate. Now three and two on Molina. Molina 0 for three so far today with two strikeouts. Struck out in the second, flat out to right in the fourth, and struck out in the sixth. Here he is in the eighth. Two outs and nobody on. Yankees up seven to three. And he walks. You know, as a pitcher, you really have to have a lot of confidence that you can throw that breaking ball over when that three two count, especially with a four run lead. Right now on YesNetwork.com, you can track Roger Maris's record-breaking 1961 season. Go to YesNetwork.com slash Maris for daily updates and look back at the historic home run chase. Plus, follow Derek Jeter's quest for 3,000 hits. It's all just a click away at YesNetwork.com. Aaron Hill digs in, swings at the first pitch and pops it up. Sun and wind wreaking havoc as Dickerson Makes a play for the final out. No runs a hit. No errors and one man left. Let's go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Yankees up 7-3. Yankees up 7-3, but we need a Paul O'Neill game summary. Some of the things we've learned today. You almost <laughs> made a comeback in 2002. You've turned down an invitation to be on Donald Trump's Celebrity Apprentice. You're hoping nah, these are false for hoping an invite for to nah, Dancing with the Stars. This is all you. Did you write this up? And you're still receiving $54 Seinfeld royalty <laughs> checks. Yeah. So nah, we've learned a lot. I'll, I'll admit to that one. Well, you've, well, you've turned down Celebrity This is not. I almost did. We <laughs> talked about it. Turned down. I don't know if I turned it down. We talked about it. And hoping. You know, it's. So, you know, your paper just got graded. That's an F. Uh. <laughs> you know what? If you're taping this, everybody, or DVR, and go back. I'm right on those. That's a Paul O'Neill <laughs> game summary. We got a little geyser out there. What's going on out there? I don't know. Something in Central Park, but it looks great. Hyundai scoreboard, 7-3. to three. It's a beautiful day. Sean Camp is a new pitcher for the Blue Jays, and he deals to Eduardo Nunez. There's the strike. to left field Patterson will make the play and let's take a look at the numbers on camp 20 games good ERA hit per inning not too many walks good numbers since last Wednesday. Long stretch without an appearance. 
It's weird with closers. It's either feast or famine. You could use them three, four days in a row, and then there's just no opportunity. And early in the year, it happened. I mean, he was in a, he yep. had a lot of close games. He had a lot of saves, a lot of save opportunities. Derek Jeter has been a great hitter from the sixth inning on. How good this year? 352. is a big at bat as a hitter in your mind because you're, you're one for three you know one for four is not a great day one for three is okay but if you get a hit here two for four you get on the plane you think you had a great day count two and two what did you do on a long flight did you read did you sleep I used to uh, you know, that's back when the, the little movie things were out right and, Watch a movie or two, especially on the West Coast. I used to drive to Girardi crazy because I'd bring a pair of drumsticks and work on the, you know what paradiddles are? Mm. Little, little drumming patterns oh, and yeah, stuff. Yeah. I would like drum on the back of his seat. <laughs> but just for fun. Play cards, love playing cards. Makes the flights go a lot quicker, believe me. Drumming on the back of his chair must have been a thrill for him. <laughs> Ask him about it. I will. He had dark hair until O'Neill started <laughs> playing drums on the back of his seat in the flight. Metropolitan Grill, is that still the hot That's spot? That's the big there? hot spot in Seattle. Great, great, one of the best restaurants in the country. 3 2. My sources tell me John Sterling will be there tonight and tomorrow. Well, I'd like the Chateaubriand for two for one. Susan. <laughs> they must have the sun in their eyes in their booth, huh? Or they're just really cool. Yeah. They're cool. We already knew that. As Jeter works a walk. So how does that day stack up, Paul? One well, for three with two walks. Is that right? Yeah, it's much better. One for three is much better than one for four. Because if you do the math, if you're a 333 hitter, you're great. Right. 250, you know, you're, you're borderline. So good at bat. Got to stick around after the last out for the WD Mason postgame. Bob Lorenz and Kimberly Jones break down this finale of the Blue Jays. And they bring you the latest news from around the league. Plus, hear the team's reactions from the clubhouse. It's all coming up on the WD Mason postgame. It's only on Yes. Here's Curtis Granderson. Two for three today. That was hit by a pitch. And a strike. Each team with nine hits, but the Yankees with the long ball have struck the decisive blows. Two two-run home runs by Andrew Jones. A two-run home run by Mark Teixeira. He's counted for six-sevenths of their runs. Six-sevenths. Try that twice. <laughs> Jeter gets back. Look at the series he's had against the Blue Jays. Six for ten, two ribby, six runs scored. And he was walked three times and hit by a pitch. A big stolen base last night in the bottom of the ninth, too. Hot shot foul. Uh oh. Now, would that annoy you as a right fielder if the ball boy missed it and you had a trudge no, after? You, you see Bautista, you got to give it to a fan, try to make a friend out there. It annoyed you as a ball boy, I'm sure, because you were just on camera and you just booted it. And you're probably trying to impress those young ladies right there. And you just You booted the ground ball. And now they're just... They're giving you the business, and they're texting about it. <laughs> That's right. You could have been on Sports Center. Remember a few years ago, we had a, yeah. one of the ball boys on Sports Center play of the day. High fly ball, right field. Drifting back is Bautista. He puts it away for the second out.
So here's Mark Teixeira. Mark is one for four, but the one was a two run home run, a bullet into the seats at left. Now he's batting from the left side against the righty, Sean Kemp. Something off there, way out in front. The attendance here on a Wednesday matinee, 43,201. Yankees continue to lead the American League in attendance. The 01. And they're second in the big leagues to the Philadelphia Phillies. Logan. Rivera. One of them's getting work and one of them's coming in. We just got to figure out which is which. I would think Mariano would want an inning or two. You would think. Line drive. And that'll do it. So now we'll check to see who's coming in at the bottom of the ninth. It's 7 3. They're not tipping their hands just yet. That means you're going to have to come back here on Yes to find out who will pitch the ninth. when they head to Seattle to take on the Mariners. Complete coverage starts at 9.30 with the Tri-State 4 pregame. Then Ken Singleton and David Cohn will bring you the call. Yankees-Mariners, it all starts Friday at 9.30, only on Yes. Well, we are witness witnessing history here at Yankee Stadium. Mariano Rivera will appear at this moment in his 1,000th career regular season game. He's the first pitcher in big league history to appear in 1,000 games for one team and he's the 15th big league pitcher to ever appear in a thousand games here's Eric Thames there's striking you were there for the first one at 95 Paul and here you are for the thousand and you know what you, you figure what about 900 and 950 of them have been unbelievable He's just been so consistent, so good. Deserves everything good said about him. He deserves it. Eric Thames leads off with a single to center field. So Rivera, who has not pitched since Wednesday, gives up the leadoff single. That's going to bring up Rajay Davis. Pitch outside. This is not a safe situation for Mo. He just needs to work. Yankees are up by four. Blue Jays have actually out hit the Yankees in this game, ten to nine. But the Yankees. Leading seven to three in the column that counts. One, one. One and two. In my mind, Mariano is the best closer of all time. Do we have any argument there? No. Then I mean, you got Eckersley, Trevor Hoffman. is looped in the shallow right. Dickerson will make the play. And you, you could have an argument with Eckersley in the time that he pitched. Right. But, you know, Mariano's done it since 1995. Yeah. Yeah. Incredibly, I don't think anybody could ever do it that long again. And although Trevor Hoffman has more saves, Trevor Hoffman did not do well in a lot of big situations. Yeah. Mariano has excelled throughout the postseasons. He's had his big blowups in 97 and game 7 in 2001, but probably the Yankees win five World Series during this time. Uh, I've told many people uh, the rings that we have at home, we would not have them if Mariano was not on that team. We wouldn't have all of them, I guarantee you. He meant so much to those teams because it, he became more than a closer. It was, you know, the last six, seven outs at times. Encarnacion pinch hitting for Knicks takes a pitch up and in. That's right.
not holding on. Well, they are holding on things. High fly ball. Deep right center. Drifting back is Granderson. He'll make the play for the second out as the Blue Jays are down to their final out. Will he be the last player to wear 42? Is there another player in the major no, leagues? The last Which guy. Be the last guy. Granderson staring right into the sun. And he struggled as the ball settled into his glove. We talked about early in the game left field, sun dead in your eyes, but as the game goes on, obviously the sun moves. It becomes di more difficult for the center field late in the game. All right, Sebia, his first at bat. He's actually pinch hitting for John McDonald. And now the Blue Jays are down to their final strike. Rubber game of this three game set for the Yankees. They won two out of three from the Mets. Looking to win two out of three from the Blue Jays before they head to the West Coast to begin a three city nine game tour. Crowd on its feet. The 0 2. He struck him out. Ball game. Put it in the left column. The Yankees win seven to three. So Mariano in his 1,000th regular season appearance, first pitcher ever to do that with just one team, gets the final three outs as the Yankees win this one seven to three. Stick around for the post game show to find out who's today's Chevy player of the game. Funny moment right there, as you see Laz Diaz, one of the umpires, walked past Mariano and shook his hand as Mariano took. His turn in the uh, in the receiving line. Uh, he's an amazing pitcher. He's had an amazing career. Started in '95, drafted by the Yankees. A Yankee who started as a uh, starter. There's a handshake with Laz Diaz, and then became a reliever. And that's the kind of appreciation a guy like Mo has, even with the umpires. Never complains about a call. Nothing like that. As the Yankees with a big win last night, they carried it over into a victory this afternoon in a Wednesday matinee, and they beat the Blue Jays seven to three, seven nine and zero, beating three ten and two, and it looks like our very own Kimberly Jones has flagged down the Yankee closer. Kim, that's right, Michael. What are we talking about? We're talking about you, but let's start with the team. I know you'd prefer that. There you go. There took two out of three in this series, two out of three from the Mets. How would you sum up this homestand? It was a great host time, you know, besides uh, against the Rex, everything else was good. You know, I didn't like that one, but uh, again, we had to continue playing, play hard, and, uh, you know, we came until today. All right, even the umpires want to talk to you after this game because appearance number 1,000, the only pitcher to ever do that for the same team, Mariano. What does that mean to you? That means you're old. <laughs> Beyond that. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. It's great. You know what I mean? Like I said, I, don't, I never like to talk about myself, but uh, it's great. You know what I mean? Uh, been blessed. You know, being here for so many years and uh, being able to play with uh, with the same organization. You know I mean? I had to thank God first. Uh, the organization, the Yankees, for giving me the opportunity. You know, family for the support. You know, and, and, and all of that. So I'm a great teammates. And with that, I mean, uh, I mean what, what else you can ask? One of those former teammates is in our booth, Paul O'Neill. He just said he wouldn't have the, all of those rings at home if you weren't the closer. Do you reflect ever at this point in your career? Do you ever wonder from 1995 to here everything that's gone on? Well, I mean, I don't know about that, well, about what O'Neill says. You know, I mean, that, that's, that makes make it feel special. But at the same time, we have a great bunch of players that uh, want to play. And uh, I mean, the rest is just history. So a thousand appearances. How many more do you have in you? I don't know. I don't know. As many as God wants me to make. That'll be a lot. Simple. Well, thank you, Kim, and thank you to Mariano as well. So he doesn't think that Paul O'Neill's right. Shocking. But he is humbled by the compliment. Mariano Rivera strikes out. J.P. Arancibia to end the ball game, start the handshakes as the Yankees win 7-3.